Hey, welcome to Options Brew TV. I'm your host, Lex, and today we have a very special guest, Mr. Henry Schwartz from CBO, CBO, I, should, I better correct myself, CBO Global Markets. He is the head of product intelligence at CBO, CBO Global Markets. Let's bring him in. Henry, how are you? Thanks for coming. This is going to be interesting, I promise. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Lex. I'm excited. This has been a heck of a year. We still got, we still have another six weeks left. And uh, I, I mean, I've been in this business for 30 years almost. And I've honestly, I've never seen a period like this. Yeah, this is, well, I, and what, what's crazy about this year, um, I think we come off a pandemic, right? And people are at home playing on their computers. Retail trading for us in our world is is really uh, approachable, right? They've kind of eliminated the barriers, which was probably cost. Um, so it's very approachable. You're prob you're Mr. Mr. Data and see volume like nobody's business. You've got your, your pulse, your hand right on that pulse. So you're talking about volume numbers are out of the, uh, the stratosphere. Is that correct? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've done this um, you know, state of the industry uh, presentation for the last few years at, at OIC. And, you know, there was, you know, almost a decade there where we were kind of, you know, four and a half billion contracts a year was kind of what we got. Sure. And, um, you know, then last year happened and we, you know, we jumped up to 7.2. And then I just ran the numbers like through yesterday. Uh, I think we could hit 9.5 billion contracts. We're, we're definitely going to hit 9.4. So um, just astounding growth. And, you know, as you said, it's, um, you know, I've been on the institutional side. That's kind of where I, you know, I started out um, mm -hmm. as a market maker and, you know, I was on the SIBO floor actually as a clerk uh, in OEX when that was, you know, the, the, the place to be. And, but, you know, most of my, my 15 years or so of trading was institutional and, you know, retail was not, a segment that anybody paid any real attention to. And I mean, most of the estimates were that, you know, retail was maybe 10% of the mm -hmm. market volume. And, you know, the, the way that the last couple of years have gone and, and, you know, we were talking about this, like maybe it's just the perfect storm of uh, the work from home uh, opportunity uh, that COVID brought, I guess it's an opportunity plus the reduction in friction that is really coming from these zero cost, you know, brokerage offerings or commissions getting cut down to, you know, near zero for retail yep. specifically. And, you know, my estimate is that we're, we're getting about 10 million contracts a day in retail volume that was not here five years ago, it just wasn't. And so, um, it, that's really where most of the growth is. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really interesting just to see that whole ecosystem, you know, evolved, you know, really quickly. And also how the institutional side is, is kind of dealing with it because, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, you, you know, some of the moves that we've seen uh, in these meme stocks, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's upsetting the apple cart in terms of all the assumptions that, you know, you know, you know, as a market maker, you, you think of things a certain way, right? There's a distribution of returns and you kind of expect things sure. like, you know, every once in a while in the olden days, the stock would double on a takeover, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody would talk about, well, is this even a potential candidate? And um, it's just a different world now and right. it's persisting. And that's, I think, what the most interesting thing is. I mean, you know, the beginning of last year, everybody was like, wow, we saw this incredible surge, you know, with the market sold off, you know, so hard in, in the spring of 2020. Mm -hmm. And then we had this incredible bounce and you, you know, you had the, the GameStop, uh, you know, in the news and, you know, this kind of situation where like people were like, well, okay, retail, maybe retail got lucky because they, they bought calls into this incredibly strong bounce off of uh, the lows but that was a year and a half ago and you mm -hmm. know it's 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 kept up and that's that's kind of what's amazing yeah so um you mentioned uh, along the way here you think that the number is you probably know that the number is 10 million additional retail contracts per day is that what you said early just a little earlier that that added. is added yes added okay. over what had probably been a baseline of a, of a few million yep. um and you know there's there's you know the data the, the the publicly available clearing data, right? You have customer firm and market maker. Sure. And we, we I spend like, you know, half my time trying to splice and dice the data into 
to make as much sense of, out of it as possible. Um, you know, you, you see it in the re, in the in the customer clearing, but that includes hedge funds and uh, you know and and little customers. Okay. Um, but you know, people, you know, you can dig into these uh, six or six filings now. You know that that are uh, available for some of the big brokers, and there's there's the numbers are published. You know, and, and or sure. and you can also back into it from payment for order flow data and and you know so all that together. Um, you know, that that's where that number comes from. And, um, you know, and, and, and luckily, you know, I moved in, I moved to SIBO about, uh, about a year and a half ago Mm -hmm. and, you know, I have access to a little bit deeper data than, um, than I used to in terms of, uh, seeing kind of where some of the flow is coming from, which is, which is pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's great. So let's talk about, about, trade alert that's your that's your product right that you had you were running that on your own uh a couple of few years ago right SIBO bought you correct me where i'm wrong here yeah. um now you work for the for the for SIBO global markets and trade alert is still an offering there i'm i'm, I'm assuming yeah um, so, great product by the way i just want to say to the folks too that you know it was something that i used it was it was it's awesome um, i'm going to let you take it and explain it a little bit uh but boy what kind of information can you generate with the sort of things that you're, I'm going to say scanning. I know that might not be the right word, but the things you're scanning for, it's amazing. I can't, I can't wait for you to show this. Tell us a little well, bit about it, the history. Sure. So, so you know, like I said, I, I, I was a market maker, and then I was trading institutionally uh, for a few banks in New York, and um, you know, I was on the sell side as the first electronic exchange, you know, which was the ISD launched around the year 2000. And the game started to change, and and you know what what had always been um, somewhat easy to understand, which is what is going on today. Uh, you know, you used to be able to pick up the phone and call an IBM broker, and in, you know, even though there, the contracts were list, you know, single stock contracts were listed in on multiple exchanges, and there were only four at the time. Uh, IBM still tended to, to print on SIBO, so you could call your SIBO broker and say, hey, what's that 2,000 lot print that I just saw on my Bloomberg? And they would say, oh, you know, uh, Goldman came in and they, you know, they bought 2,000, and they crossed, you know, 700, stock was at, at, you know, at this level. And that was, that was the transparency that you kind of, that, that was an important part of the business, especially the business of, of serving hedge funds um, and institutional trading firms. Mm-hmm. So as the market evolved, and then all of a sudden you had, you know, truly electronic trading and the market fragmenting uh, even more, you know, we went from, you know, four exchanges, which is kind of how the the landscape had been for 30 years to five. And then all of a sudden you had more, more popping up and, you know, and, you know, fast forward to today, you get 16 different exchanges and the order flow, um, I'll show you in in TradeAlert because I'm super happy to to kind of show off a, a few of our or, yeah. Let me let me bring that in for you. Okay, right. great. Yep. Can um, you see that? Uh, yeah, it looks good. Okay. So tell us what uh, we're looking at. This is so, great. Okay. So what you're looking at, the Trade Alert is basically a um, a supercharged kind of time and sales um, order flow monitor or, mm-hmm. you know, or blotter. And what this grew out of was, like I said, we used to be able to call the floor and say, "Hey, what just happened?" But as the um, as the the volume started to fragment across all these new exchanges, and as the the speed of everything was was picking up because things were truly electronically executed, mm-hmm. uh, that became impossible. And in fact, I turned to turned to the guy next to me, uh, and I was like, "Dude, what am I supposed to tell him? I didn't even see that trade. I can't even figure out if it was a buyer <laughs> or a seller." And he's like, "Just make something up." And I was like, <laughs> "Really?" And he's like, "You got to tell him something." And I was not super comfortable with that. And you know, I was like, so so when I left Bank of America, um, I left and a developer, a friend of mine that we had worked together for years, left around the same time. And we were like, let's let's do something together that's not mm-hmm. working for a bank. And this whole concept of order flow analysis was uh, was what we kind of settled in on because we could really get our arms around it. And also, it really was was a was a crucial part of the business and and it felt like it was very helpful to people we had worked with really. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of building a business, you know, it's certainly easiest to to do what you know, and it's also easiest to to kind of create something that you're, you know, that's going to appeal to your network. And so like I knew a lot of banks and everything else. So, um, so really what, what, what trade alert does is processes the, the options market data in real time, augments the, the time and sales 
uh, with as much additional information and, and contextual information as possible to help people like you and me and, and institutional salespeople and retail traders even see what's happening and make sense of it so mm -hmm. that you don't have to go digging through time and sales to figure it out. Sure. So, um, uh, and the way that it does it is it's kind of simple and it's a funny story is, you know, this is just a little window, okay? It's a scrolling mm -hmm. window of information. The reason it kind of feels like, um, you know, kind of, kind of basic is it was actually built as an instant messenger bot back mm -hmm. when, when AOL instant messenger from, <clears throat> from uh, you know, the late nineties through about uh, 20, 11 was still what even the institutional traders were using to talk to the brokers and everybody else. So it's a, it's a, it's very simple, but um, it's also very easy to use. And, and there was kind of a nice side effect of appearing as an instant messenger window because this system is actually available through a few instant messenger clients that still exist like mm -hmm. symphony and, and ice chat um, is nobody's installing any software. You're just pumping data through a channel that they're already used to. It's mm -hmm. already on their desk that they're already used to working with. Um, and you don't have to get permission from the technology team because you're not, in, you're not asking them to install anything. Right. So, um, so I'll show you a couple of, of what I think are the, the, the biggest value adds that we have. And, you know, we're, we're very innovative, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and still are somewhat unique. Um, I'm, I hit stop so that this thing's not going to keep scrolling off because what happens is the way it works is a, 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 a user sets up triggers and mm -hmm. we usually help people do it, but the triggers are going to send you trades and sweeps. I'll show you sweeps in a second that are the right kind of trades for the activity that you're engaged in, whether you're a salesperson or a trader or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, <laughs> there used to be about 2 million trades a day in the market. Okay. That was five years ago. Um, before this kind of retail wave. Uh, now we're seeing four and a half, five and a half. I think the record was almost 7 million individual executions per wow. day, which is, which is really, it, it's astounding. And it also creates all sorts of new data issues because, you know, database that was expecting a couple million rows a day of, of mm -hmm. trade data is now three times that. And, um, I mean, you know, that the data, the explosion of data density between quotes and feeds and everything yeah. else is, uh, is its own challenge. But um, so basically you got, say you got 5 million trades a day. Every single trade has some information in it, right? Mm -hmm. Some are significant, some are not significant. Some might be significant to you and not to me. So what we're doing, and I'll just show an example, is, is um, we're taking a trade like here's, you know, 1,092 of these um, ATVI Jan 67, 67 half calls trading. Right. So that's a trade, okay? Now, the market at the time was 248, 256. So mm -hmm. the very first thing that we do, and, and, and I, d I don't think anything we do is, is kind of um, <clears throat> rocket science. It's, it's mostly just kind of like heuristic ways of like, well, how would you make sense of that trade? Well, first mm -hmm. of all, I, I would say, well, did it trade on the bid of the offer? And, right. and so what we came up with is, Basically, let's let's append the bid offer, which is not, you know, in, in the data world, the bid offer is kind of a separate thing from the trade. So you got to the, the, the program basically is buffering all the bid offers. And keep in mind, there's a million and a half individual listed contracts now. Right. Also, also a record. So you got to store all those. And then as the trades are coming through, you're you're kind of clamping the, the, the market on. And um, and then we basically make off, um, offer side trades green because to you know in our model that's an apparent buyer initiated trade okay and and bid side trades red and that actually is a throwback to when i my first job was for uh hull trading on the SIBO, and we were taught when the, the when the screen lights up green you want to buy that contract and when the screen lights up red you want to sell it um and yeah. so the, it's the same right right the, the, we know, had the same uh, methodology henry that was that when i saw red i put my hands were out yeah, so. <laughs> it's, ex it's exact. That's exactly it. Um, right. And so that was the first and, and pretty simple piece of information. But it was new, like the, you know, looking at time and sales on any platform. It, when we kind of started out, you all you saw was was that, you know, the, the details of the trade. Um, now, there's actually something even more to, to that trade. Um, there's a trade and then there's a sweep. And so, like, if, if you look at this 
trade in AMAT, okay, that's mm -hmm. an individual trade. 485 of these Jan, Jan 2024, 150 is traded at that price. They traded mm -hmm. um, near the offer and it, they, they printed on the box, okay, that's, and this is actually on the box floor, sure. which is kind of funny because they're an electronic exchange and they said, okay, we also want to have a floor. But that's <laughs> one trade. The, what I was mentioning in terms of the explosion of, of data is, when you have 16 exchanges and, and you know i know you've seen this is people use these smart routers to maximize right. liquidity they basically have to if you want to go buy options you have your choice either you and you and you and you have a large trade to do either you call a couple of trade desks and say hey i'm looking to buy you know 1400 of these baba put and the you know traders look at it they decide what price they're going to offer you where the stock needs to be what their hedge is going to be they take that all into account they make a market um mm -hmm. And then maybe the if you get the order, you, you cross the trade on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, what 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 we kind of recognized and and you know caught early was this this move to to smart order routers to sweep liquidity. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I don't want to call a bank and tell them this is what I want to do because maybe um, maybe I want to be a little bit stealthy about this trade, right? Because the thing is, if you call a desk and you call a couple of desks and say, hey, I'm looking to buy five thousand of these uh word gets out and you know there's kind of some impact there so mm -hmm. and maybe the the the, bet, the the bank says i don't want to sell them to you and and you don't get the trade done so smart routers basically let people um you know they're run by the big bank sure um they let people grab liquidity across all 16 exchanges they, they're optimized for for timing and they're optimized for the fees that is that you know fees and rebates and all this kind of stuff sure so, it's the way that uh, the um, larger trades take place, and so you, you know, and you can you detect that, right? So you detect when that that exactly. black goes out, and you call we call it a sweep, right? Well, yeah. So we so we aggregate those sweeps into single mm -hmm. trades. So we were looking at this one in ATVI, right? Yep. So it says multi because that trade, if you click detail, actually was not one trade. It oh. was it was all these pieces. It was forty six trades touching all 16 exchanges in 23 milliseconds. Yeah, so that looks like the same time to the average user who isn't into milliseconds, right? So that's well, a blast. It goes out to all the exchanges. It comes out to be whatever that number, grand number yeah. was, a thousand something or other. Yes, a thousand and ninety-two. Uh, exactly. thousand and ninety-two. Okay, so and, and a sweep, does that give, you know, me, Mr. Retail Trader, let's say, some information? What's good about a sweep or bad about a sweep for me? Well, what so the the sweeps. So so that it's it's a good question. So sweeps, we we understand the dynamics, right? Somebody somebody wants to buy as many of these as they can because sure. they don't really think they can get that liquidity by calling one broker. So a sweep is a is a kind of an aggressive way of going and buying calls mm -hmm. uh, or going and buying or selling anything. And so it, it's interesting because if we look at the at the biggest trades in. Um, in this name today, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you get a feeling for like, okay, here was, you know, this is, I think this is um, the trade we were looking at, right? But mm -hmm. there's a few other sweeps. Um, you know, this one in, in the in the Jan 65s was only a few minutes before that one that we were just looking at. Sure. And when you start to see, see, it's kind of, people are trying to stay below the radar. They're trying to buy, uh, you know, the, the sweeps tend to be very honest in terms of the data. Yep. Um, because it's not a floor trade, it can't really be backwards. Um, so if it looks like a buyer, it's a buyer in a sweep uh, mm -hmm. versus a floor trade, which still has people involved and in, you know, maybe the stock moved before they actually get it into their handheld or the, the trade printed. With a sweep, it's, it's legit, right? They, sure. they just, these, all you know, these, these 40 something orders traded in, in you know, 20 milliseconds, um, that's, a, that's a good data point. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we, and, and that's kind of, you know, so, so I guess the, you know, the putting things in context is, is w the, the whole point, right? So right. you can look at this trade and say, okay, here's the interesting, this is a, you know, this was actually a call seller in the Jan 72 halves. And, you know, like, well, how do you know that? Like, well, I know it for a couple of reasons. One is it traded, you know, near the bid or on the bid. Sure. Um, two is um, another one. This is kind of interesting. And this is a, a really nice benefit we got by, by joining forces with SIBO mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. Um, we have very solid theoretical values that are powered by this um, 
company that they bought about three months before they bought us was Hanwick, um, mm -hmm. which is a kind of theoretical modeling as a service uh, okay. company. And so they're running market maker style um, uh, pricing in, you know, in real time, letting their curves, um, you know, float and, and sure. correcting for, uh, they even handle like, and this one was a surprise to me because I, you know, I traded on the floor a long time ago, but they, they're able to take volatility curves and handle earnings situations where the curve is really not the normal smile that you, that we usually think of. Sure. It actually kind of has a couple of shoulders to it because mm -hmm. people look at this and they go, okay, I think this stock's going to move $2 tomorrow because historically it moves $2. What ends up happening is like, okay, well now if there actually is a pretty good probability it's going to move two dollars, okay, up or down, you end up with a with a low point in the volatility because it's actually more likely you're going to hit one of those two dollar sure. up down points, and so in the vol curve it means you can't just use a nice like you know the parametric type of fit that we're used to, mm -hmm. and so they call it a W shaped curve, um, okay. but fitting that is is funky, right? It's not <laughs> it's not that easy, and so. We don't have to worry about that. We get theos on every trade, and right. so in this case, um, you know, in a in a liquid name, the theo is going to be pretty close to mid market, right? Because things are, are relatively, you know. Let efficient. me let me interrupt here, Skin Henry. Let me ask a question. So, it, since you have theoretical value, okay, and it looks sounds like you have good theoretical value, you ha you you know where these things trade relative to bid ask, so you can you can interpolate a little bit there as well. Um, can 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 you? Uh, show implied volatility shocks when something trades. I'm making this up. Thirty percent over, you know, uh, an IV thirty historical or something like that. Can you do you do something like that, or is there any implied volatility sort of? Um, we, we, I know it's a bad word, we but do, I, yeah, no, we do. So, um, um, we we do, and this is an, it's kind of another synergy we get with with Hanwick. Is like so we've always kind of done you know of this is a term structure chart, right? Mm -hmm. So these are your at the money vols now and yesterday, and and we have the listed, and then we have the interpolated. Mm -hmm. um, we do have um, we do have the realized volatility also. So basically, um, if you wanted to look at um, uh, so we have we have recap commands for the, the, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted the, you know, the IV, the, the biggest IV gainers among the top 100 names by liquidity, sure. um, we have a recap command to show that. So, so like Roku is, is, you know, kind of a nutty one today, at least. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually see uh, if you look at the historical volume, you know, here's, um, I'll turn off some of these because there's some can be a little bit hard to see. But so like if you're just looking at the implied vol, you see that spike up. Sure. And what's interesting is you also see the skew spiking up. So we just use a 25 delta um, mm -hmm. uh, risk reversal type of thing. But um, to be able to kind of just quickly make sense of like, okay, what's going on in Roku today? Well, you know, you know, all of a sudden you're like, well, here's what's going on, right? The volume is very heavy, right? Mm -hmm. um, the volatility is up. The skew is steepened. So, and the stock's down, um, about 30 bucks right so yeah. so the story comes together based on the data plus some you know some modeling of, of what's going on sure. and that that's really what why we we created is is to make some sense of the activity and then you know one of the other things that people love i don't know if it one flew by while we, we started talking but um unusual option volume is is another one so like those aggregating the sweeps was a big Yep. early success for us people loved it um um identifying unusual option volume in how is that defined way. henry the so unusual. so we keep it relatively simple i mean it's mm -hmm. so we know because we have all the data we know what the average daily volume is in fray okay sure um and then we know how much volume trades per minute of the day it's not quite linear you can do it linearly mm -hmm. it wouldn't be terrible but um you know, there's kind of a slow period around lunchtime. So basically the, the system knows how busy anything is and the alerting on that is just parameterized on an average, of, on a multiple of, of expected volume mm -hmm. and a minimum total volume. So meaning um, if you say, hey, I just, I want to know about uh, anything that's trading more than five times its normal volume, uh, you know, on pace for five times its normal volume. It's, sure. it's kind of a smarter way to think about it. Oh, and by the way, I don't want anything less than 
4,000 contracts because that's just going to be, you know, mm -hmm. might be some really thin name that happened to wake up. And so, um, you know, the users get to set the triggers for how they want it, but yep. um, so you can adjust those parameters and you can even do something like, I, I only want to see in the unusual volume where implied vol is picking up. And so, um, because that, you know, that'll kind of help you get the stuff where, where sure. there's something new is happening and people are, you know, the, this vol is always picking up, obviously. Um, it means right. there's there's you know some additional expected. Uh, so it sounds like you can you as a user or me as a user, you, you, you I can be pretty granular here, and and it sounds like I can set my universe. Is that right? Do I have to have the whole universe, or can I set can, my universe? You can alert on a single single ticker. You can say, hey, I want everything in. Uh, you know, give me everything in. Uh, you know, Tesla over a hundred contracts, and mm -hmm. the system will now send you everything in Tesla over a hundred. You can say, hey, I want I want to get. Um, uh, financials um, over 500 where the size is greater than the open interest and mm -hmm. and it's a call and it's a and it's a buyer and all of a sudden you will get those trades so you can the scope can be a single stock it can be a sector it can be like I showed you that top 100 top 500 we do some kind of auto baskets that, sure. that help people focus on the liquid names um, and um, and then you can actually do baskets of your own. So if you have you know if you have a, a, a couple of hot lists or you you tend to follow the gold names, you know you can mm -hmm. just put those into a, a gold basket, and right. then you can create a trigger on the gold basket, and then you can even um, you can even um, set you can do recaps based on those baskets. So like um, uh, like so in this in this name in this account, I have one called Pot, which is the the cannabis names right mm -hmm. so there's a basket called pot that i created so then if i want to go see what's going on in pot i can actually use that basket name and oh, you know, here's nice. your here's your biggest trades here's your most actives you know right. unusual volume is one um I, you know biggest vol movers sure. um it's very it, it's it's funny because you know we started in 2005 and and SIBO bought us in uh in 2020 so we had mm -hmm. 15 years of kind of evolution sure and you know and a lot of time with the, the banks and mm -hmm. you know, users who were like, oh, by the way, I want to be able to see hard to borrow names. And we're like, oh, wait, we can do that based on, sure. you know, you know that the data in the options um, can be used to figure out what's hard to borrow, right? And so um, you can actually, uh, you know, you, there's actually a hard to borrow basket you can use, or you can mm -hmm. set triggers based on the, the implied borrow. So um, it's, it's, I love it. It, it's awesome. I mean, it's really, and you know, and, and what, I'll show you one other thing that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, then I don't want to, I don't want to use up all our time, but yeah, we got a couple of minutes and we'll, we'll shut her down, but let's show us this and okay. uh, we're going to get you a plug. And uh... so, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So something like Uber today, right? So, you know, yep. I said that, you know, we can see, okay, the, you know, Uber, you know, the, the put volume is 5% above normal. The call volume is a little bit light. So that's all, all sorts of some information. But what, what I think is very cool is when you see a big trade, um, you know, the system will mark a trade opening if it exceeds the open interest, okay, which is a, a model-based identification of that. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't say opening, then that means there's enough open interest that it might be closing. And so one of the big tasks everybody's always trying to figure out is like, ooh, well, that, was that a, is that buyer opening or closing their position? So if you look at the data, um, um, you know, these these uber calls it at two cents okay i'm mm -hmm. going to start out by guessing like oh you know what it's a two cent call i sure hope it's closing for the initiator of that trade anyway but if you dig into the life to date history of that contract because we have it mm -hmm. you actually can kind of see when these things were opened so right. so on november 10th was the busiest day for these no 50s Twenty one thousand mm -hmm. traded. The net open interest went up by ten grand. We're just mm -hmm. we're just putting the pieces together. Sure. Um, and on that day, sixty percent of the flow was offer side. Okay, which is like okay, so that makes it kind of look like it was probably a buyer that day. Mm -hmm. uh, they they closed at seventeen cents. You can dig into it and actually go look at the individual trades. But stock was at forty three bucks at the time. Okay, so mm -hmm. you know, and then you're like, well, okay. You know, we just saw uh, four thousand traded two cents today. So now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I think this. I think I understand now. They bought them for seventeen cents or, or so, and they just dumped them out. You know, the stock's lower. The market's mm -hmm. getting smacked a little bit today. Um, and 
you can do that for kind of any position of interest. Sure. And, um, you know, we have a pretty little chart that kind of helps people make some sense of it. You can see when the, when the positions were opened, right? So mm -hmm. like the bars are the activity, greens yep. are the offer side stuff. Um, it's just a nice way to be able to say, like you can look at this little section here and go, well, okay, it actually, these no 50s got pretty, pretty active at the beginning of the month, open interest increased. It looks like it was mostly buy side, mostly offer side activity. Yep. And so, you know, somebody was, was building a position and it didn't work out. And, you know, they're puking some of them out today right. um, to take their last two cents. And um, <laughs> that's, it's kind of, that's what we're all about. I mean, um, that's great. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a tool that lets people see it, it. It's, I think one of the best things about it is the flexibility means like, listen, I trade, you know, whatever, you know, I, I'm interested in these, these 10 names, or I'm interested in following these unusual volume names mm -hmm. very closely. Um, and the, um, whereas somebody else, you know, we have, we have floor brokers, right. Who are, who are, who are users and they just, they need to see anything over, you know, $2 million in premium. And, um, and it's different for every user. And that's, um, that's kind of the power is, is you're not all, everybody's not looking at the same stuff. Everybody right. is looking at what should be relevant to them. And that's the whole point. If you get 5 million trades a day, mm -hmm. you certainly don't want to see most of those. Right. So, okay, let's, let, let's, uh, let's give the folks a little idea. How can, can, can the retail community have access to this? How, how does the retail community get to this? If, if at all. So, um, we do have, we, I mean, you know, the way that the, the last 18 months have gone, you know, we went from probably 10% of our customer base being mm -hmm. retailed to probably about 30% now. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and, yeah. um, and what's really interesting, you know, we we're talking about, well, maybe was this the perfect storm for retail? Um, a lot of those users know what they're doing, know sure. the right questions to ask, know how to make sense of the data. Some of them, you know, may start and say, look, I, I trade vertical call spreads. Uh, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we say, oh, well, here's how you can see vertical call spreads in the system. So you can see what other people are trading in terms of the vertical call spreads, which is, it's very educational. Sure. Um, but, um, but we do have, I mean, so, you know, so retail, you know, the, the, the website is still tradealert.com, trade okay. with a dash, trade hyphen alert.com. Okay. So it's um, trade hyphen alert.com, right? Yeah. Something yeah. like, let something like this. Let me see if I can get this to scroll across the banner, uh, across the bottom. Something like go. that. That is us, and there is a subscribe page where uh, where um, retail it says institutional and and self directed okay. or something. Retail can create an account there. Okay. Um, we do have a we have kind of a pro version and a and a light version. The okay. pro version is what I was using here. It's the interactive version. It's the one that lets you um, create the triggers as as specific as you want. The the light version which is which is i believe 129 bucks a month you kind of have to go with a prefab set of triggers and it doesn't have the recap functionality mm -hmm. um it's it, it costs less but it's probably got you know 10 percent of the functionality right um what what i would what we usually say is, is you know we're, we're actually happy to set up trials for you know for people sure. that think this might make sense for them um you can either send a contact link in from the web page or you can send an email to um, okay. to support at trade dash alert dot com mm -hmm. and we'll we'll reach out and you know say sure. look you know um, because it's there's so much in there you know there's a user manual there's some videos we have but we tend mm -hmm. to walk people through it a little bit okay. um, to make sure they're going to get the stuff that is relevant to them and to answer the questions um, that they might have about what they're looking at. Good. Okay, great. Well, I got that, that trade alert, uh, dot com there and I, I think I spelled it correctly. You did. Um, <laughs> folks can go there and check out the, the various pricing levels and there. I think they can get a hold of you or your team, uh, through that website, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Let me and just, uh, just let me tell, sell, tell folks too. It, it really is a great product. I'll tell you once, once the world became, uh, digital. And what I mean by that is Henry and I can't stand on the trading floor really anymore. I mean, maybe SPX, but all of a sudden, the data became masked. Uh, we didn't know where it was coming from. This product starts to unmask it even even better for you when you're sitting at your own desk. It's a great product. So, Henry, thanks so much for coming. That was a great explanation. I really enjoyed it. Cool. Well, you're welcome, and, um, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Talk to you soon, Henry. 
Okay, everyone, thanks. This is Options Brew TV. Don't forget to subscribe, Options Brew TV on YouTube. We'd love to see you, and we always have new great content. Thanks for coming.